Welcome to the JBoss EAP7 Management Console Overview. The EAP7 Management Console can be used to start and stop servers, deploy and undeploy applications, tune system settings, and receive real-time notifications about important events. In this screencast, we'll first cover some prerequisites and new features in the EAP7 Management Console. We'll then show you how to access the console and perform some common administrative tasks. Finally, we'll discuss some advanced operations and show you where to go to get additional help. JBoss EAP7 works across a variety of infrastructure components, including the operating system and database. EAP7 also requires Java 1.8. Developers can download EAP from developers.redhat.com downloads. For production use, customers can download from access.redhat.com. EAP7 introduces several new features into the management console. The Management Console UI has been dramatically overhauled to support a unified information architecture which is applied throughout the Management Console. You'll now see a hierarchical and navigable view of profiles, subsystems, servers and server groups, deployments, and runtime information. You can also view your profile hierarchy and see which subsystems in a given profile are inherited. The new UI also unifies the way you manage standalone servers and manage domains. New subsystems such as Undertow for web, Artemis for messaging, and batch processing using JBoray are exposed in the console, while your custom extensions and subsystems are exposed through the management model browser interface. New data source templates with sane defaults for popular databases such as Postgres or MySQL make it super simple to create new data sources for use by your applications. Finally, those new to EAP will find a guided tour as part of the new homepage that explains basic concepts in JBoss EAP 7. Here I have a standard installation of EAP 7 running on RHEL 7. Before I can access the management console, I first need to add a user with the appropriate permissions. To add that user, I'll run bin slash add user dot sh and answer a couple of prompts. I want to add a management user with a simple name, give him a password, no groups for now, yes to the prompt, and then the final prompt is asking about server-to-server uh, -server communication. We'll say no for that one, and I've added the user. Now I can start up EAP in standalone mode. Once EAP is started, you can see the location of the management console in the log file. I'll go ahead and open that in my browser. It'll prompt me for the username and password of the user that I just created. Once I type in the username and password, I'm now into the console and I can see the various sections of the site, including the home page and the take a tour for new users who might be interested in learning more. The management console's home page includes several sections with common administrative tasks. We're going to create a data source, so we'll read the instructions and click start. We'll drill into subsystems, data sources, non-XA, we can see the example already created, and we're going to add a new one. Click Add. In this case, we're using a Postgres database, so we'll select the PostgreSQL data source and click Next. The values you see here come from the data source template. If you need to make any changes, feel free to do so, but we're going to just go with the defaults. Here we'll specify the driver by clicking Detected Driver because we've already installed the JDBC driver. We'll select Postgres and click Next. The connection URL looks good, the username is, needs to be changed, and the password should be good. We'll click Next. Verify the values and then click Finished. Now that the data source is added, we can go ahead and click on it and click View. And you can see information and modify properties about the data source. We want to go ahead and test the connection, so go to the Connection tab and click Test Connection. You can see a successful message indicating that everything looks good and the data source is ready to be used by applications. Whether you're using EAP as a standalone server or as a managed domain, deploying apps using the Management Console is pretty straightforward. On the home page, you'll see a section called Deployments. In that section is a small description of how to get started and a link. Click the Start link. Here you're taken to the Content Repository, which shows you all of the available content you have. In this case, we have nothing because we have just started using EAP. So we'll go ahead and add a new piece of content. Click Add, choose Upload New Deployment, and we'll find the WAR file that we've pre-created from a JBoss quick start called Kitchen Sync. Click Open and click Next. Verify the name. You can change these values if you wish, but we'll just go with the defaults. And click Next. 
and the item is uploaded to the content repository. Before you can use it in a managed domain, you need to assign it to a specific server group. So click on the app and click Assign. You can choose which server group you wish to assign it to. In this case, we'll go with the main server group. You can also automatically enable it, saving you a step once it gets assigned to the server group. So click that and click Assign. Once the app is deployed, you'll get a success message. And then you can click on Server Groups and browse to the server group that you just assigned it to. Click on the app and you can see that it is enabled and it is successfully deployed. So you can visit the app by simply opening a new tab and going to the server and the context path and see the app in action. We've covered some basic examples using the EAP Management Console, but there are advanced operations as well. EAP 7 introduces hierarchical profiles, and with the Management Console you can clone and view them. You can also launch the Management Console independently from EAP, or use the Management Model Browser to manage custom subsystems you've installed into EAP. You can also tune your apps for performance using the console, you can secure access to it, and you can deploy EAP as well as its console onto OpenShift. For more information about these and other operations, visit docs.redhat.com to receive updated documentation about all of Red Hat's products. For subscribers, you can get access to your support using access.redhat.com. You can also access the forums and knowledge base. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned a little bit about the EAP Management Console in this screencast.